and girls, it's Miss Molinado here again. And in honor of what would have been our National Cherry Blossom Festival that happens every year in April in Washington, D.C., I have found one of the books I bought one year that I was in Washington, D.C. And this is a story of how the cherry blossoms came to the United States and how much they meant to Eliza, who advocated to bring them for a very long time. So this is Eliza's Cherry Trees, Japan's Gift to America, and it is by Andrea Zimmerman, and it is illustrated by Ju Hong Chen. Eliza's Cherry Trees. I'm sorry about the lighting. That sunlight is so bright. I love it though. I love it when it's bright and sunny, don't you? Okay. Eliza's Cherry Trees. Japan's gift to America. Sometimes a person with a good idea can make a big difference. Eliza Skidmore was one of those people. She changed America's capital, Washington, D.C. Eliza and her brother grew up in her mother's boarding house in Washington. It was a lively place. Eliza met many politicians and travelers who stayed there. Eliza's mother was even friends with President Abraham Lincoln and his wife. Eliza got to visit them and play at the White House. One of Eliza's best subjects at school was geography. She liked studying in a world that she lived in and all the countries that were in it. Eliza loved Washington, but she wanted to visit the real places on her maps. Eliza wanted to see the world. In those days, few people could travel away from home. Eliza was lucky her mother took her to Europe when she was a teenager. She saw fascinating new places. In 1873, Eliza went away to college. She liked writing and she was good at it. She was starting to feel grown up and she liked being independent. Women at that time had very few choices. Eliza had different ideas. She didn't think she had to stay home and be a wife, or be a teacher, or a nurse, like many other women. Eliza wanted to keep traveling, so she had to find a way. After college, Eliza started writing articles for the newspaper. She worked hard and made very good money. Soon Eliza was paying her own way for her travels. When she was 26, Eliza bought tickets to faraway Alaska. Few tourists had ever been there. Eliza wrote reports for the newspapers back home. She loved sharing the fascinating things she saw, such as huge glaciers, spouting whales, and the native people. Eliza even wrote a book, her first guidebook to Alaska. When Eliza went back to Washington, it wasn't long before she started thinking about traveling again. She decided to visit her older brother who was working in Japan. Eliza sailed across the ocean. In Japan, she rode on trains, carriages, and bumpy rickshaws. She climbed mountains, ate strange foods, and visited ancient temples. Everything was so different. She studied Japanese art and learned to speak Japanese. She fell in love with Japan and its people. Eliza especially loved the Japanese gardens. Eliza's favorite plants by far were the Japanese cherry trees. Eliza called them the most beautiful thing in the world. Thousands of the trees were planted in the parks and along the river banks. When they bloomed, the trees became clouds of pink blossoms. As the petals drifted down, it was like pink snowfall. The Japanese people loved the cherry trees as their national symbol. Crowds gathered for the picnics under the trees. People wrote poems and painted pictures to honor those sakura. Oh, I forgot to show you the beautiful trees. When Eliza came back home, she wrote a book about Japan. She wanted to share her love of Japan with other Americans. She wanted the nations of Japan and America to be friends, even though she was always thinking about her next journey. 
Eliza loved coming home to Washington, D.C. She was proud of America's growing capital and wanted it to look as beautiful as any city in the world. She thought about the muddy land from a recent construction project in the swampy area around the riverbank. Eliza had a wonderful idea. She remembered the beautiful cherry trees in Japan. She thought, that's what Washington needs. So I hope you could see, boys and girls, if you've been to Washington, D.C., this right here is part of the National Monument. This, the National Mall, sorry, the National Mall, because this is the Washington Monu Monument, and all the way on this side of that reflecting pool is the Lincoln Memorial. Eliza told the man in charge of the Washington Parks about the wonderful cherry trees. She showed him photographs that she had taken. She told him her plan to plant hundreds of cherry trees down by the water. He said no. He believed that they didn't need any different kind of tree in Washington. But Eliza knew that sometimes when you have a good idea, you have to keep trying. So she waited. When a new parks man was hired, she told him about her good idea. He said no. So all she kept getting from everyone was no, 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 no. Eliza kept traveling. She also met with friends who loved to travel. Some of these friends had started the National Geographic Society. The society was for people who wanted to learn more about the world. Eliza was the first woman to have an important job there and she helped the society grow. She wrote many articles and books. Eliza made more trips to Japan, Alaska, and Europe and she explored India, China, Russia, and Java, an island in Indonesia. Eliza also became a photographer. Not many women did that either. She took pictures for the Smithsonian Institute and recorded people in places that America and Americans had never seen before. But Eliza didn't forget about the cherry trees and she didn't give up. She kept trying for more than 20 years. Every time a new man was hired to be in charge of the parks department, Eliza went to tell him all about her idea and each one always said no. In 1909, William Howard Taft had just been elected president. Eliza had another good idea. She knew that sometimes people in politics could help get things done. She wrote a letter to the president's wife, Mrs. Taft. Eliza told Mrs. Taft about her plan to make Washington more beautiful with the lovely cherry trees. She was afraid the answer would be no again. But Mrs. Taft loved the idea. With the help of Mr. Takamine, a generous Japanese scientist, they had the trees sent from Japan. So here come the trees. Everyone was happily waiting for the trees to arrive. Eliza imagined the beautiful pink clouds of blossoms that would soon be blooming in Washington. In January of 1910, 2,000 cherry trees arrived. They were given as a gift from Japan's capital city, Tokyo. But there was a problem, boys and girls. Some of the scientists found out that these trees had a lot of disease and insects that would be harmful to Americans and their health. The trees had disease and bugs. The inspectors were afraid they would make American trees sick. The president agreed and he signed an order for all the cherry trees to be burned to ashes. Eliza was so disappointed. She also was afraid that the Japanese people would be offended. But the mayor of Tokyo said they understood. He even joked about George Washington chopping down a cherry tree. That's a joke for another day because I still don't get that joke. If somebody watching this video knows what the meaning of George Washington chopping down a cherry tree means, please email me. New trees were carefully grown in Japan. In March of 1912, 3,000 new trees arrived. They were inspected and declared healthy. On March 27, 1912, there was a small ceremony at the planting of the first two cherry trees. Eliza watched as her longtime dream was finally coming true. Over the years, the trees grew and every spring they bloomed. 
people began gathering to enjoy them and to celebrate their beauty, just like in Japan. Eliza was happy to see how they helped turn Washington, D.C. into one of the most beautiful cities in the world. As Eliza grew older, Eliza remembered all the places she had visited. She believed that all the countries in the world could live together in peace. She spent her later years working for that. She knew that sometimes, when you have a good idea, you just have to keep trying for a long time. Eliza was very happy that her lovely Japanese cherry trees in Washington, D.C. became an international symbol of peace and friendship. Well, let me tell you that every April, April they have the Cherry Blossom Festival and it is in honor of all the cherry trees and there's a parade uh, in Washington DC around the National Mall and a lot of people go visit during this time. Actually, I've been there one time, two times, I think I've been there three times around this time of the year. and. It has been very nice to go, and of course you can see I have my I Heart DC shirt because I do love Washington DC, and all of you older kids that know that I'm obsessed with the Library of Congress know that I hope to one day go there, and who knows, maybe work there. Maybe I could be the next Librarian of Congress. Well, not the next one, maybe like the next, next, next one. I have a lot to learn still. All right, that's the end of my read aloud for our Japanese Cherry Blossom Festival. And I'm going to include some activities uh, next week that are about the festival and the cherry trees and everything that Eliza Skidmore did to help bring them to the United States. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video. And if I can, after the video ends, I'll try to add in some pictures or maybe I'll put that on my website about the times that I've been to the Cherry Blossom Festival and seeing the cherry trees in Washington, D.C. Goodbye.